Hey guys, it's Crystal and welcome to my YouTube channel. And so today what we're gonna do is go over a super awesome paint technique that I love that I think is kind of underutilized. It is a textured technique. This is our sample board, okay? Do you see it? Pretty awesome. It kind of looks like a concrete, um, like, I don't know, stone kind of faux technique. You can use different colors with this if you want, but for today's video, we're gonna be using these colors that are fairly neutral that I think would fit into any home decor. So you can use this technique on home decor, you can use it on your furniture, you can even use this on cabinets, walls, whatever, whatever you want. So um, also before we start, I just wanna let you guys know that every video that I do in the description, I'm gonna have a list of everything that we use so that way you don't have to go back and try to remember. There will also be a link to everything that I use in the videos. This is an affiliate link, but it doesn't cost you anything to use. So every time that you click on that link, I get a little tiny portion of it. It just helps to support my small business and allows me to keep on bringing you guys YouTube videos and blogging and all that stuff. So I really super appreciate it. It's just a way to help support a fellow artist or, you know, for me, um, when I put out this, this information or this content, it just helps to support me. So I always, I always appreciate that. Also, make sure that you are hitting the subscribe, subscribe button. I think it's down here. <laughs> it should be down here. So hit that subscribe button and then once you hit the subscribe button, click on the bell and you will get all my latest videos. I am planning on expanding this YouTube channel. I'm gonna do more than just furniture. I'm going to kind of take you guys with me when I go and pick out furniture throughout Europe. And I just think it's gonna be super fun. You can thank my husband for that one because that was his idea. So I'm hoping to expand this channel and just have you guys grow with me and hang out with me while we're on this adventure. So let's get started on this awesome technique and I cannot wait to show you. Okay guys. So the first step that you want to do when you are painting any kind of furniture is to prep. So you guys know if you've watched my videos before, when I prep a piece, I clean it really well. If it's shiny, I sand it down. If it's something that, if it's, if it's solid wood and it's shiny, I usually do a scuff sand and clean it. If it is a piece that is not shiny, then I just clean it really well. If it's a piece that is not wood, if it's maybe like um, laminate, something like that, then I use a gripping primer on it first and foremost before I start painting. So with this piece, I've already cleaned it really well. If you can see, this piece has been used over time. I have used it to show gilding wax and all those good things. So because I've used Dixie Bell products, um, I am able to just paint right over it after I've cleaned it. And so what we're gonna do with this textured technique, this textured technique, is we are gonna lay down a base coat. So my base coat is gonna be Gravel Road by Dixie Belle. Okay, Gravel Road is a dark, dark gray, almost like wet concrete, okay? So we're gonna lay down the base coat of whatever you're working on with the Gravel Road, and then we're gonna move on from there, okay? Just know that this technique, you can use different colors, but for this video and to get the stone look, the concrete look, this is the colors that we're gonna use. But by all means, you know, use your creative mind and you can maybe get some other cool looks with it. For laying down this base coat of Gravel Road, I'm actually gonna use my Dixie Belle Synthetic Flat Medium Brush and we're just gonna lay it down. All right, everybody, so as you can see, we have our base coat of Gravel Road on this piece. I uh, probably saw it in the time lapse saying I flipped it upside down and did the upside down because we can see these and it's just easier to get 
all these little areas right here. When you flip it upside down, it's a little bit easier to get the legs. So that has gravel road on it. It's a dark, dark gray. So we're gonna allow that to dry. But the next step that we're gonna use, we are going to put our sea spray together. So for the next step, while we're allowing this to dry, we're gonna gather our products that we need. So what you're gonna be using is you're gonna be using Dixie Bell Sea Spray Texture Additive, okay? You wanna grab that. You wanna grab a mixing cup. You wanna grab the color French Linen by Dixie Bell. You want to get a stir stick. You also want a putty knife, okay? And then you want just a cheap chip brush. Those are the next things that you're gonna to wanna to gather for the next step while we are allowing this to dry. The base coat on this is dry now. So the next step is for us to mix, let me grab it. We are going to mix our sea spray with our French linen before we add this on here. So we're gonna go ahead and mix this and then we're gonna add it on. All right, so we're gonna mix our sea spray. This is the sea spray right here, okay? It is a texture additive. It says mix two level scoops of sea spray to every eight ounces of paint. Well, we're not gonna use eight ounces of paint because that is this entire jar and we're not gonna use that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one scoop and we're just gonna kind of work with it, okay guys? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some sea spray in here and we're gonna mix a little bit of paint and we're just gonna kind of work it a little bit at a time until we get the consistency that we want because you're not gonna use the same amount of paint or sea spray in every single one. So I kind of wanna show you guys how to eyeball it to where you're getting the texture that you want. So let's start first. This comes with a scooper. Okay, so it's super convenient. And we're gonna mix, let's do this. We're gonna kinda just shake it off and level it. And we're gonna put that right into our mixing cup, okay? Then the next step is we're going to take our French linen and we are going to make sure that we have it mixed up. And then we're gonna open it up. And we're gonna pour this just a little bit at a time. So we're gonna pour a little bit of our French linen in here. Okay. So we've poured a little bit of our French linen in here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our stir stick and we are going to stir it, okay? We wanna make sure that it's nice and stirred. And I can already tell you right now by us stirring it that this is not enough paint. You see how it's kind of gloppy? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit more paint to this. You want it to be like a pancake batter-like consistency. So we're just gonna keep on stirring it. And you're gonna wanna go in because you don't want, there's little pockets of that powder that could get stuck later on. Kinda like, you know when you're mixing brownies together? So you wanna make sure that you get everything thoroughly mixed. And again, that is not what we want. So we're gonna put even more paint in here. Let's add a little bit more this time. And we're just gonna do it a little bit at a time. See, now this is a little bit better. You can kind of hear, hear how it's got a better consistency. Okay, so that's a little bit too thick still. This is kind of like a dried concrete almost. We're gonna put a little bit more. And if you end up putting too much paint in there, you can always add just a little bit more sea spray. That's the beauty of it, is you really can't mess this up because you can add a little bit more of the other one. You can add a little bit of paint if it's too dry. You can add a little bit of sea spray if it's not dry enough. So do you guys see how this is like a, this is what we're wanting. You want like a gritty, almost pancake batter like consistency. So I'm just gonna continue to mix this up really well. And once I'm done mixing this, we are going to move on to the next spot. We're gonna continue mixing this. And this is the consistency it should be, okay? This is the consistency you want to go on to our next step. All right guys, so we have mixed our sea spray with our paint. And so now what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to want to, let's get the stir stick out of here. You're gonna to want to grab your chip brush along with your spatula, okay, your putty knife. So there's a couple different textures that we're gonna create here. So I'm gonna take the putty knife right here 
And I'm just gonna kind of slightly go on this like that. Okay, and this is just a way to add texture. So we're gonna go on it like this on these larger areas. It just makes it a little bit easier for me to spread it on there versus trying to spread it on here with the brush the entire time. So I'm just gonna go like this and kind of knock it down a little bit. Go like this, knock it down. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my chip brush and I'm kind of just gonna pounce it. What that does, if you can see, it creates another texture on there. So all these areas that I've kind of smoothed out a little bit, like this area down here that I have smoothed out with this spatula, I'm going to go like this just to add even more texture. Do you see how it does that? And so pouncing on this, what it does is it just creates even more of a 3D texture, okay? And then this kind of makes it a little bit more of a uniform look versus taking your brush and pouncing it all over the place. Just taking that spatula, uh, the putty knife, and spreading it on there and then pouncing it just gives you a more even look throughout this piece. So you're gonna continue this on the entire piece and then you're gonna allow it to dry. Depending on how thick you put it on, where you're located, your humidity level, all that stuff, it could take a few hours to dry, up to 12 hours to dry but you wanna make sure that it's thoroughly dry before we move on to the next step. So we are going to do this on the entire piece and then we will move on to the next part. So let's do this part right here too. Or I'll show you kind of like, okay, so, oops, I touched it. So I'll show you on this area right here where it's very flat and you're like, how am I gonna make this look cute? So what you're gonna do, we'll just set this down we're gonna take our putty knife and just spread it on here, okay? No big deal, just spread it across. You can go any which way that you want. What we're doing is we're just spreading this texture on here. I'm gonna spread it across, but right up against that leg, okay? And I'll just show you this little area. And we're gonna take our chip brush and we're just gonna pounce it, okay? Gonna pounce it to add more of a texture to it. And then if you don't want that textured pounce, you can always knock it down. Go back and knock it down like this. You can knock it down like this or you can pounce it and then even go with your putty knife and just kind of knock it down a little bit. Oh, here, let's. Okay, go back with your putty knife and knock it down just slightly. So it creates like a, almost like an orange peel texture. If you guys have ever seen a texture wall, it's gonna create an orange peel texture, which looks really cool. Now, what do you do if you have an area, let's say this right here, that this is kind of ornate right here, or maybe even down right here. You're just gonna take your chip brush in these cases and just kind of dab it, okay? It down in those little crevices and it'll still create that same texture that you had in the other places but clearly the putty knife is not going to be able to get into these areas so this is what we're just going to do okay you want to do that on these little areas right here where there's crevices and again you want to continue this entire process on your entire piece if you want it all over your piece, or if you just want it in certain areas, you wanna put continue this process in whatever areas that you want to do this in. So as you guys can kind of see, I have done the texture additive on this piece, and I'm going to just let it dry. So I'm gonna let it dry, and also before what I did is I took my gravel road brush and I put it in a sandwich bag. So um, this is what we're, I did that because we're going to use a gravel road again later. So after you've done all your texture the way that you want it to, then allow that to thoroughly dry before we move to the next step. All right, everybody. So our sea spray paint mix is completely dried and you can kind of hear it. I guess when I go over it, you can hear it. Um, so what you want to kind of do is if there's any parts that have flaked off, you want to get those out of there before you start painting but we are gonna take our gravel road again, and we are going to go over this one more time. 
So because there's texture in here, I wanna show you, we go over it with a paintbrush, right? But you miss some of these areas. It's almost like if you're painting a textured wall in your house. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is lightly pounce those areas, just ever so slightly, so that way you get that paint really good into all those areas where there's texture. Because those raised areas, we are going to sand those down in the next step. And so you wanna make sure that your paint is nice and good and in the crevices, because when we take our sandpaper and sand the top, it's gonna reveal this color underneath, but we want all that gravel road to be in the recessed areas below. So I am going to do a coat of gravel road over this entire piece again, and then we will come back and go over the next step. All right guys, so let me apologize first if you hear the little birds in the background. I have brought the piece outside, which you can see right here. I brought it outside because we are going to do the sanding part and I didn't want to do it inside. Generally when I sand anything, I have a mask on, but because I'm going to talk to you guys and just do a little bit at a time, um, that way you can actually hear me, we are going to do the next part. All right guys, so here's the next part. This part right here, this gravel road is dry. I have a 120 grit. Oh, you can't, yeah, there's the one, the one, two, and then there's the zero over here. So it's a 120 grit paper or sandpaper. And I also have my steel wool. So the reason why I have this is I go over this first and then I go over it again with this, any kind of area that I couldn't reach or area that's not flat. I like to go over it with my triple zero steel wool just for extra, so I know I made every spot. So now what we're gonna do, let me pull this over here. We are gonna lightly sand this, okay? So let me adjust it so we get a little bit closer so that you guys can really see what this is gonna look like. Okay, so we, I have tried to get this entire piece. You can see I've missed a couple spots, but that's okay because that all goes in with what it's gonna look like. But we're gonna take our 120 and we're gonna lightly sand over top of the area that we went over. So we are sanding these raised areas. We'll just sand the whole thing. You wanna lightly go over it. And for these parts, this is where my steel wool comes into play. So I take my steel wool and you might sometimes sand a little bit of it away. That's okay if some of it flakes off, not a big deal. But that's what this steel wool is for. It gets all these little recessed areas that we didn't get with that flat sandpaper. Do you guys see how we're able to get that lip right there? See this? We're able to get all those areas right here. Now, after you sand pieces, sometimes there is, you know, like a, a a residue or like a little bit of a dust left over. So we're going to continue to go over the spot with the steel wool. I use the triple steel wool because it is abrasive enough to sand the top to get that top coat off, but it's soft enough where it's not going to just completely sand it away. Same with the 120 grit sandpaper. Okay, so I have a paper towel that I got. It's a kind of damp paper towel. This part's a little bit dry, so we're just gonna take it and just wipe all this away. So you're wiping that excess dust off. You can also take like a chip brush and wipe it away, but I'm using a damp brush because I want to see what it, it's gonna look like without that dust on it. Cause you know, sometimes that dust can make it look a little bit lighter than what it's gonna look like. So that's how we start exposing that bottom layer of the sea spray that we used underneath this gravel road. So I'm gonna continue doing this, the sanding. We're gonna use the 120 grit sandpaper and the steel wool on this entire piece. 
And then once I am done, I'm gonna go over it with like a little damp rag just to wipe away all the dust and we will move on to the next step. Okay, everybody. So this paint is Dixie Belle paint. It doesn't require you to put a top coat on it, but if you do wanna put a top coat on it, I really like the Easy Peasy Spray Wax right here. It's just easy because it's textured, um, but you can use anything if you want. So I'm gonna show you guys how we are gonna do this last part. So what we're doing is we are pulling out our sawmill gravy right here, okay? And we've got our cheap chip brush. And what we're gonna do is dry brush this. So we're going to dab a little tiny bit. And then what we're gonna do is just very lightly go over it, okay? Just very lightly go over these areas that are raised like a dry brush. Okay, you don't want to go over it super hard. You wanna just go over it lightly. And what this does is this kind of finishes up that stone look. If you see like right here, it kind of grabs those areas that we didn't pull through. And um, so you wanna just kind of dry brush over top of it. You can keep on going over it and then you can dip more if you wanna lighten it up a little bit more. So if you wanna lighten those areas up a little bit more, you can dip some more and just you can go over. You wanna go over this entire piece like this. And this is how you're gonna make this. You see how it's kind of pulling? Sorry if it's not focusing. But you see how it's doing that and it's pulling that and lightening it up and making it look stone-like. So this would be the last step in this process. You wanna go over the entire piece like this. And if you want to do extra protection, this is what I suggest you use, but you can use any of the top coats. So go over your entire piece and then let it dry, wait 24 hours, then put your top coat on and then you are ready to rock and roll. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this tutorial helped you and added another paint technique to your arsenal. As always, please subscribe. Make sure you're hitting the bell so you get all the latest videos. All of the products that we use will be down in the description below. And again, thank you guys so much and have an awesome, awesome week.